Now let's begin this unique course in medical terminology. By now you've come to realize that this is a very unique audio-visual course in medical terminology. We have provided you with live lectures and hundreds of pictures to help you better understand individual word parts and compound terms. Each frame can be studied independently, replayed, and referred back to at any point in this program. That makes this course a very comprehensive tutorial approach to this unique language of medicine. This comprehensive course not only improves your vocabulary for medical terms, but it also improves your English vocabulary. Somewhere along the line in the public schools, we have eliminated Latin and Greek courses as part of the requirements for a high school or a college education. During this course, we will go back and learn thousands of individual word part meanings from Latin, Greek, and many other Indo-European languages. These individual meanings are referred to as literal meanings of the word. In this unique language of medicine, we will not only give their literal compound term meanings, but we will give the actual compound term meanings, which means we will give more of an actual meaning as we might explain it to someone in medicine or to a layman. Now this course is designed to improve your vocabulary, not only for medical terms, but for thousands of words outside of medicine. Now to teach medical terminology, we need to have some basic information about anatomy, which is body structure, physiology, which is body function, and pathology, which is the study of diseases. Now in the file introductory frames to each body system, we will cover specific anatomy and physiology information. If you've already had a course in anatomy and physiology, then these introductory files may be used for reinforcement of information. But for the 80% of students that have not had anatomy and physiology, this basic information is necessary for success in this course. Now let's break the ice for this course with one of the most complex compound terms that I've seen in many years. This is a term taken from the New England Journal of Medicine that refers to a disease that was caused by Mount St. Helen when the volcano erupted on May 18, 1980. This volcano spewed millions of tons of ash into the air. This dust was breathed in by individuals and eventually the body walled these individual fibers off with fibrous tissue. As a result, the lung tissue was clogged and it obstructed airflow and a person couldn't breathe and if they didn't receive a lung transplant, they died. The term used to represent this disease will give the term a literal meaning. The word parts used in this term and their meanings are intra, which means within, pneumono, which means lung, ultra, which means beyond, micro, which means small, scopo, which means to view or examine, silico, which pertains to silicon carbon particles found in the dust of the volcano, volcano means to vent or erupt, conio pertains to dust, and osis means a condition or a disease. Now in this term, which is pronounced intranumano ultramicroscopo silico volcano coniosis, there are nine individual word parts. Most compound terms only have two to four individual word parts, which includes a stem word, a suffix, and often a prefix that modifies the individual term. Now this term has a prefix, one or more letters that modify the word at the beginning, a suffix with one or more letters at the end, and seven stem or root words. Now one of our primary course objectives is to help you identify prefixes, suffixes, and root or stem words, turn them into their combining forms, and attach them to other word parts correctly. We also need to spell the individual word parts correctly and be able to give that word part a literal meaning from the language it came from and in some cases it has multiple meanings and give an actual meaning for the word part if necessary. Now remember that some word parts have multiple pronunciations like duodenum and duodenum or acetabulum and acetabulum and some terms have multiple spellings like hemo. It may be spelled H-E-M-O but in Europe, it's more likely to be spelled H-A-E-M-O. Now let's take a look at our lengthy compound medical term. You can see that this term begins with the word intra. This prefix ends with the letter A, which is the combining vowel which permits us to attach it to the next word part. The next word part begins with a consonant P, and this A allows us to pronounce the two terms combined without a flaw in our speech. In almost every case, when you combine individual word parts, you must have a vowel between the word parts. 
when we combine the next word part, pneumon, with the next word part, ultra, you can see that ultra begins with a U. So we do not have to take the word pneumon and add an O to it. The U is already there as the combining vowel. At the end of the word part ultra, it ends with an A, so we can combine it to micro. Now micro, scopo, silico, volcano, and conio all have a combining vowel of O. Now the suffix for this term is SIS. SIS means a condition or a disease. Usually you will see a combining vowel in front of it in the form of an O, an IO, an A, an IA, or an E. All of those combining vowels in front of it turn SIS into its combining form. Now the word part in front is conio. The rule states that the suffix always keeps its combining vowel, so the word part conus, which means dust, and has been turned into its combining form of conio, will drop its O so we don't have two O's side by side. But the vowel I has to be retained because it was a part of the original stem word conus. Now this process of identifying individual word parts and looking at their combining forms will be repeated time and time again throughout this program. This process of fracturing and identifying will become as easy as falling off a log as we progress in this course. Now let's pronounce this compound term again and give both its literal and actual meaning. The term is pronounced intro, nomon, ultra, microscopo, silico, volcano, coniosis. Now let's pronounce it a little faster together to add a little sophistication to your vocabulary. Are you ready? It's intranumon ultramicroscopo silico volcano coniosis. And its literal meaning, starting from the back of the word and moving toward the front of the word, is a condition or a disease of dust vented from a volcano that is composed of silicon carbon fiber particles that you're going to be able to view or examine that are very small, but they're beyond normal vision and they affect the lungs deep within. Now, an actual description of the term might be as follows. This is a medical condition or a disease that's caused by the tiny silicon fibers of volcano dust. These etiological or causative particles can only be viewed with an electron microscope because the fibers are so small they can't be seen with a normal microscope. This disease process affects the bronchioles and alveolar sacs deep within the lungs. Now an actual description can vary considerably depending on how the individual wants to communicate the problem to another individual. Now let's look at these two pictures at the bottom. The picture to the right is referred to as arc welder's black lung and the picture to the left is coal miner's black lung. The term that refers to these two conditions would be pneumoconiosis and it literally means a condition of dust that affects the lungs. The actual meaning would be any disease of the lung caused by chronic inhalation of dust, usually mineral dust of occupational or environmental origin. Two specific types of pneumoconiosis would be asbestosis and silicosis. In future frames we will give the literal and the actual meanings for both of these terms. Now we've covered a lot of information in this frame, almost 10 minutes worth. So take a deep breath and relax and let's progress to the additional frames in these first four files. My promise to you is that by the time you finish this program you will have a tremendous understanding of both medical and English terms and these vocabulary life skills will make your life both happier and more effective.